On today's Prep Rally Podcast, we have an avalanche of spring sports all over the region that will be happening this week. And we also have some vacancies that we've filled. We'll be right back. It's the Prep Rally Podcast, the only podcast in the state dedicated to prep sports. Brought to you by the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Here's your host, Chip Souza. This is the Prep Rally Podcast. I'm Chip Souza, joined by Ricky Fires, Graham Thomas, and Leland Barclay. But we want to welcome Graham Thomas in. Graham is the going to be Ricky. He's going to be your new boss. You need to be on your best behavior. Absolutely. Yeah. He's going to be the new sports editor of the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Graham, first of all, congratulations. Yes. Thank you, Chip. I appreciate it. I'm happy to be here. There you go. And we got Leland, as always, holding it down in the River Valley below the Bobby Hopper Tunnel is all Leland's territory. So don't be going down there through the tunnel. Hey, I, that, that's Leland's territory down there. And he marks it. I think Leland's yeah. forgotten more sports than I know. So, you know, that, <laughs> that's, that's, that's like all of us. Yeah, absolutely. So we have got a man, an absolute avalanche of sports to talk about today on the podcast. We'll start on my left with Ricky Fires. Ricky, last week you had baseball, baseball duty going on over at Greenland. Yes. For regional. Had baseball, softball going on on side to side fields over at Greenland. Man, yeah. what a great job they do over there. Lee Larkin, and I know he's retiring, but I don't think we're going to let him go. We're going to chain him to that little awning that they have out there between the fields and not let him go. And I think you appreciate this because uh, uh, it was raining at the first round, and a lot of teams said, oh, we can't play in the rain. We can't play. Uh, Lee Larkin uh, and the board, they oh, got yeah. Oh, yeah, you're playing. Spring, they said, well, we ain't quitting. <laughs> we, we ain't quit. going. Yeah. And, it was, and you saw two uh, great games all the way around. I'm not smart enough to pay it. I'm focused on one. And every once in a while, hey, look out. There'd be a softball headed the other way, <laughs> yeah. right by your head or something. Yep. But one of the highlights, the, let's see, let's, the real highlight is uh, Mansfield won that region. And the next highlight is, I've been doing this, no, Lee Larkin said he's been doing it 33 years, and a fight breaks out behind the stands between. That's the best part of your story, Ricky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it probably was. Yeah. Most factual, at least. We, uh, Ricky going to be the new MMA reporter, Leland. We're putting him on MMA reporting. <laughs> actually, him octagon. actually, I was about five feet from it, and I found this big old girl, and I got behind Stand her. Stand behind her. Yeah, so I got behind you. her, yeah. Absolutely. So, but, uh, yeah, uh, you know, the fans get uh, fired up, especially, you know, with their children and everything, but at, at, there is no cause for that. And and uh, uh, one of the Green, Greenland people kind of broke it up, and they got this guy on the ground, and when I left the ballpark, I saw the two Mansfield people look like they was filling out a police report or something. Okay. So it got nasty there. And you know what? It's going to be exciting. You're going to – emotions got to – uh, going to be high, but, man, you just got to keep it under control. What we used to say back in the day, Ricky, is you better check yourself before you wreck check yourself. Check yourself, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Mansfield girls won the softball side of it. On the other side, Greenland boys won the baseball side of it over at that yep. regional, correct? Mansfield That's girls on the yeah. softball and Greenland boys on the baseball. You know what that is? Because they came back from a seven-run deficit, scored what, 11 straight runs, and they did – and, uh, you know, they got people play better in the state because that was one of the worst games I've ever well, seen. Well, probably down there, la- they're, you know, pitching. It's like John, Johnny Holstaff was pitching pitch. that day probably. Everybody you could put a glove on. I think there is three hit batsmen in one inning yeah. and, like, five walks. So, uh, yeah, like, like you say, they're down to their third pitcher. And in high school, you don't have that. This is not the majors, not even college. But uh, they got to play better if they want to go far in state. Uh, I was over at Gravit. It was a Gravit sweep over there. The Gravit yep. softball girls won. The softball side of it beat uh, P Ridge in a great game, 3-0. On the baseball side, Gravit got a walk-off win there late. Your boy Gunner that you wrote about yeah. this week, uh, the player of the player week. Player of the week. Yeah, uh, can't remember his last name, Gunner. Woolard. No, no, Woolard. Uh, Gunner Woolard. Gunner's his first name. Uh, Gunner Woolard. Yeah. Uh, I got a walk-off hit there to win uh, that regional for the Gravit base. They got going a little bit later on the baseball championship. Now, well, first of all, Ricky, back to what you said about about uh, Greenland. Greenland got played all, all of their games last Thursday in the little little spit rain, just yeah. rain, you know, not hard, just – just enough to kind of tick you off. You're like, ah, now you know, they, whatever. they do have an artificial surface they do. on the infield. They do. Um, so they got their games played at Greenland, both softball and baseball. They yeah. didn't. They didn't. They they, you know, played through that Thursday. Yeah. Uh, Gravit played two games on that Thursday, and then said we're going to 
postpone the later two games, baseball and softball. They moved those to Friday, and that meant Saturday was double double duty for everybody. Yes. So um, the baseball got started a little bit later uh, than the 5.30 championship scheduled start because both games earlier in the day on Saturday went extra innings. So it pushed oh, everything wow. down. Uh, but anyway, it got it was a little bit delayed. So it was pretty, you know, what was it, 8 o'clock, I guess, Saturday evening before they got the baseball finished. Um, but that was good. Good job for Gravit, you know, getting both of those wins. And, uh, boy, Ricky, they have also got turf over there at Gravit. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful facility over there. Uh, and it, uh, it, it, uh, it held up well and, and great now, job there. If Go I can speak directly to Mother Nature, please, just this weekend, just hold off, and then you can hammer us next week. But yeah. we got to have yeah. sunshine this week. I yeah. said those, those turf fields are a game changer. They I, are. I, I think I covered the very first game on the turf field at Greenland uh, a couple of years ago during spring break. They were, like, minutes before first pitch, they were still – Iron out a couple of the the pieces on that turf, and I mean, those, but those are yeah. those Give me some are glue. wonderful. Tell me some glue over here. Yep. Um, so we got that done. Now uh, before we before we kick it over anywhere else, this week um, is state tournament play for everybody, six A all the way down. Uh, Greenland has got the two A state softball and baseball both starting on Thursday. Lincoln has the three A state baseball softball over there, but they're playing some games in Farmington. Okay, that three A, they're playing some of the games in Farmington. Um, so we'll have uh, that going on uh, for 3A state softball and baseball, Lincoln slash Farmington. We've got that going on. Um, we got state soccer, 6A going on in Fort Smith at Northside and at Southside Leland, and Harold McElvain will be covering that for the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette. I think Leland's covering the boys' side at Southside. Harold's covering the girls over at Northside, Mayo Thompson's. We've got that going on. Graham is loading up the wagons. He's got the horses watered and fed. Woo-hoo. He's got the wagon loaded up, putting yep. the cover over the top of yep. it. Got his vittles, <laughs> got his vittles in the back. Yep. And he's headed off to Jonesboro in the morning for 5A soccer with Salome girls, not boys, but girls, and Harrison both are just Yeah, both Harrison both teams, Harrison. Van Buren boys are over there. there and we'll we'll check in on them a little bit. I tell you what, they're they're doing something really interesting over there. Valley View is listed as the host site. But this opening round for soccer tomorrow, I think everybody's concerned about the weather, right? They're going to have four different sites for the opening round oh. over in Northeast Arkansas. They're going to have it at Valley View. They're going to have it at Nettleton. They're going to have it at Paragould and at Green County Tech tomorrow wow. uh, to you. get all those games in. I think they want everybody playing on turf and equal surface. And, um, you know, and, and if, as long as it's raining, not lightning, you can get games in. Absolutely. Even if, so. That'll be an interesting setup over there. Absolutely. So, Leland, before we kick it over to you, I'm gonna, we're going to talk about state powerlifting in just a second. I want to go back to Ricky and give props to the Elkins boys baseball team. They won their regional. The Lincoln girls softball team won the softball side of that regional. They were both played at Harrison. Now, Harrison also hosted the 1A. I don't know how the baseball turned out. But the softball, the Scranton girls uh, won the softball. Lady over Rockets. There. Lady Rockets won that. Uh, I will say that uh, there was <laughs> there was a softball game played over at Greenland last week between Lavaca and Marshall that ended up, I believe, the final score. Lavaca won it twenty-two to twenty-one. Ooh, okay, that's, pain. that's pain's pretty brutal. Went for two, didn't they? Went for two, yeah. uh, and then Lavaca. That was a, that was the first round game. Lavaca also won their next round game, and then they got played in the championship game. And Mansfield beat them fifteen five because Mansfield is incredible. Yeah. Allison Edwards is yeah. she is an incredible player as a pitcher and a hitter. And I'm you know, sitting here looking. They're twenty six and three. And guess what? Allison Edwards' record is twenty six and three. <laughs> so wow. and she's hit I think twelve or thirteen home runs. Brinkley Morton at Lincoln. You've yeah. heard that name yes. before. She's, She's a, a good sophomore. ball player. 18 home runs, Graham. 18. 18. That's what, just amazing. Uh, you know, why teams continue to pitch to her, I don't know, but 18 home runs. So so you'd put her on when she comes up to bat in the first inning. I wouldn't care if the bases were loaded. I'm putting her on. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, uh, Leland, you got a girl down at Van Buren uh, also that's got about 12, 13, 14 home runs down there. 
Emerlyn Caldwell is uh, she does it all. Of course, Ashlyn Michael. That's she's her. A junior Ashlyn catcher. Michael. That's the girl. The yep. Hit, yeah. And then Riley Lowry's a senior first baseman. Uh, this is this is this is Van Buren's year if they're going to do it in softball. Back to back outright conference championships. Well, so I'm telling you right now, softball. Our girls' softball um, from from Bentonville all the way down to Hackett is outstanding. Uh, and and I mean I'm telling you, and these girls are tough. And you want me to you want me to tell you how tough they are, Leland? Ask me how tough they are. How tough are they, Chip? The girl from Gravit, Brooke Handel, who is their pitcher. I had a story about her in today's Wednesday's yeah. North Arkansas Democrat Gazette. A couple weeks ago, gets gets hit in the face by a thrown softball. Now, let me tell you, a softball that they play with it 12, it's 12, it's a 12-inch ball, okay? Yeah. It's a 12-inch softball. Ain't nothing soft and it's not, about it. And it's not soft. <laughs> no, it's not soft. She <laughs> took a, a, a thrown ball from about 15 feet away from their catcher, and, and Ricky, let me tell you something. I saw her Saturday behind home plate. Ooh. She had her sleeves rolled up. That girl's got guns, let me tell you. She spends a little time in the weight room, uh, Kelsey Pimbleton. She spent a little time in the weight room. She reared back and threw the ball, and her pitcher walked right in the line of the throw. And somehow it's a freak play, but it, the ball hit Brooke Handel in the face and broke her jaw. Ricky, she finished the game. That's amazing. I got hit by a <laughs> whiffle ball one time and cried like a baby. Yeah. Let me just say, Nick Smith missed 16 games this season because his knee was sore. Okay? Yeah. She finished the game. Wow. Okay. Then two days later, they realized the jaw was broken. They wired it shut, and she came back and pitched six, seven days after taking that ball oh, to the face with a catcher's helmet on and pitched her team to the regional championship. Okay? That's well, tough. I'm not saying she's tough. No, nah, that's tough. I'm saying she's tough. Yeah, I'm saying you get in a fight, wow. you stood behind some big lady at the stand. I'm t- I'm having Brooke yeah. handle in front of me. <laughs> I'm gonna let her handle her again. business. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There that's you go. Like Gravit country yeah. tough. There. Yeah. I'm telling you, and man, props to her and and uh, what a great job wow. and what a great job Samantha mm-hmm. Luther has done this year over at Gravit. You know, she was a Farmington girl, played for Osnes, knows what it's like to be, to build a to winning win. culture, yep. a winning program. She's got it going on over at Gravit, and man, they are really, really good. And they beat a very good P Ridge team. This that four A one conference is brutal. Let me tell you, you got Farmington, P Ridge, Gravit. There, Prairie Grove had a good team. Gentry had a good team. Well, you know, you mentioned the, the Lincoln softball girls too, and that they're uh, Morton. I think is the 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 big hitter there. She's a good player, man. Yeah. I've seen her a couple times. I you know, props to the the Lincoln coach, uh, Brittany. Brittany, yeah. Uh, she's. Um, she makes me Brittany yeah. Ingle. She yeah. makes me feel old because she played in Salem Springs about yeah. thirteen years ago, and I covered her whole career. Done and a great job there. So Done a great, great. We job are old. Well, see, you're program. joining. Yeah. We're, all, all, we're, we're all, all old. Yeah, we're all old. Um, so we got. So this week, Gravit. I'm sorry, uh, Greenland, Greenland has the two A softball, baseball, side by side fields. Yep. Lincoln, same thing for three A. They will play some games in Farmington, but for the most part. Side by side fields over there, so that'll be great for everybody. Now that's not at their new high school; it's at the it's old. It's at the old, yeah, the okay. old school. Um, and then you got state tournaments going on all, all over the place. The four A uh, baseball softball is in Lone Oak. Uh, Leland five A is in Marion. Is that right? Marion, Marion, Marion. Marion. softball. Although and uh, some of the first round games uh, they are playing at West Memphis. In fact, Van Buren plays at West Memphis. Okay. Uh, on Thursday, Greenwood does play at Marion. Yeah, there's wow. a big weather concern. But yeah, they're they're going to do everything they can to get these games in. There is. Uh, soccer, uh, Graham has mentioned that uh, 5A is over in Jonesboro. 6A is in Fort Smith. I don't know where all the other tournaments being played, but you know what? We'll have all of that in the Democrat Gazette every day for schedules and that kind of stuff. So be sure and check that out if you want to know where anyone's playing. We'll have all those schedules. All right. Now, we're going to kick it over to Leland. Leland went down to Lake Hamilton on Saturday, Ricky, for the state powerlifting down there. Now, we've talked about okay. powerlifting on this podcast and how powerlifting, um, I'm hoping, Leland's hoping at some point, the AAA will come along and make this a sanctioned sport for boys and girls like they did wrestling. I'm still on that, I'm still on that soapbox saying that, that this needs to happen for boys and girls. But Leland was down there. Leland, tell us about that. Well, and, you know, you talk about girl powerlifting. The second year in a row, there was a team that one of their lighter competitors didn't meet the the weight criteria. Well, Prescott had a girl that stepped in. There you go. And did and, and lifted power clean and bench 
on Saturday That's to awesome. uh, to help to help them. So, That's awesome. but um, Reese Mariska from Charleston is a state champion. He won the 165 pound weight class. He lifted 550 pounds total. Now that's a 285 pound bench and a 265 pound clean, but that 550, that was 10% more than the second place finisher. The Whoa. second place guy had 500 pounds. So of course we, we've heard that name, yeah. Reese Mariska yeah. for uh, a long time. He's a junior. So he had a, uh, had a great day uh, at the meet. Caden Dugan of Hoxie was the state's strongest again for the second year in a row. He bench pressed 450. Wow. And pow and power cleaned 320 for a total of 770 pounds. That's the second most in state history behind only John Womack of Greenwood. Okay. A few okay. years ago that set the record with 780 uh total pounds. But Caden Dugan put on a show and um the lifters only get three official lifts. And on his third lift, they they discussed a lot what he wanted to go for on that final lift. And he decided to go ahead and do 450, and he got that. Uh, but afterwards, he went ahead and, and lifted 475 to set a personal record and a school record, which would have matched the 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 largest uh, bench press in state history. Wow. Now, that's unofficial. Yeah. But still, 475, and I got a video of that. Did he have a big crowd on... around him, Leland, when he threw it up? Oh, it was, uh, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. they, they announced that, and, of course, everybody came around, and it was it's it's a huge deal. It. It's it's my favorite event of the year yeah. just to go around and, and watch all these guys. And, you know, I get to talk to all these coaches. I caught, talked to Clay Toddy. You know who's yep. now the head coach at Win, and you talked to mine course, and Rick's guy. You talked to our guy Brad Harris a lot. Oh yeah, I yep. love talking to Brad Harris. You know they, I tell you, they take the weight room serious yeah, at Benton. In fact, he was telling me that they they have competition to see who's going to lift. They don't just say, "Hey, these are our ten lifters." They actually have a competition to wow. see in each of the ten weight classes who's going to represent them. And the week before the state meet. He had three guys lifting to decide who was going to be their heavyweight with uh, heavyweight lifter, uh, and and the one that won is the one that represented the school. So they had three guys that competed the week before to see who was going to be their heavyweight guy. So it's a it's a big deal at a lot of these schools. You can see a lot of the same ones are there every year. Ryzen's there. Prescott's there. Charleston's always well represented. Usually Booneville. Uh, so it's yeah, usually Booneville. Usually yeah. Booneville, but again, you know, they're most of their guys were at the state baseball regionals. Right, right. Greenland's uh, been for represented the there. In a row. Max Max Meredith. Greenland. Yeah. Greenland's a great story. Um, um, gosh, you got to re remind me his, of his name. Um, anyway, he um, the Greenland lifter uh, since the Greenland baseball team was still playing in the regionals. Yeah. He was the only one that went down for that. Oh, that's right. You said he, he drove down by himself. Which just, he, well, he, he went Thorpe down. His, he jumped Thorpe. His, yeah. he, his parents and his grandparents went down the night before, spent the night. He went out there and was the lone representative from uh, from Greenland yeah. High School. Yeah, yeah. I love that, uh, Leland. That, you know, you get in there and it's the, you're yelling and screaming and encouraging each other. And, you know, and that's. Um, it's, if you've never been to a powerlifting meet, it's really incredible that, you know, the, the, the testosterone level is pretty, pretty high. At those things. It's, <laughs> it's pretty, pretty high, high, which might be one of the reasons why I enjoy it so much. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, but they're yelling and screaming encouragement. Come on, you can lift it. You know, probably more, way more colorful language than that, but yeah. come on, you can lift it. And, and, uh, there's nothing like, you know, seeing that bar and, and a teammate or, or, you know, a, a, a brother under that bar. And uh, like that, the kid who put the 470 up, you know, I'm sure he was surrounded by yeah. people. Oh, and the green, young. the Greenland lifter is Matthew Goad. Okay, okay. Matthew Goad. In fact, his nickname at Greenland High School is Godzilla. Godzilla. I love it. Now let, let me ask you this, and and, and I saw Meredith at the, at Greenland during the baseball. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you guys want it to be a triple triple A sanctioned sport, can they move it to like? Two weeks later or something, we're done. I'm sure they could. Yeah, I'm sure they could. Because a lot of these conflict. kids are playing other sports. Yeah, right I'm sure there. they would. I, my reason for wanting it to be a AAA sanctioned sport is um, I think it would generate more interest and more, uh, you know, in yes. it. But I want it, I, Ricky, I want it for the girls. You know, I want it for the girls because, um, 
girls, uh, to me, um, strong is beautiful. Oh. To me. Um, and I think girls should be given that opportunity, you know, just like they do in wrestling. I think they should be given that opportunity. Rest, uh, Leland knows Leland's a lifter. L- lifting's a lifetime sport, um, just like tennis is a lifetime sport. Golf's a lifetime sport. Lifting, lifting is a lifetime sport, and I um, uh, am maybe a little bit closer to it. Me personally, I am. I'm, I'm a. I'm, I, I'm a fitness instructor, so I, you know, I go to the gym. And I see these girls in there lifting, and you know they're doing you know squats with the bars up, you know around behind their neck, and they're and they're doing their squats, and they're getting their lifts in or whatever. And um, I think it's it is phenomenal. I, th- I'll, I think it's fantastic. And um, anything that would encourage fitness, yeah, uh, and strength, um, I'm all for it. And I think this would would do that. Um, and so that's why you know I'm 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 just going to continue to keep pushing that button to. Uh, to try to, to you know to try to see if we can at some point get that. I have a granddaughter who's eleven. Maybe by the time she gets to high school in three or four, maybe maybe, maybe there would be something like that for her if, if she were interested or or whatever. Yeah, sure. Um, I also saw Leland. This was three or four months ago. When I say three or four months ago, it might have been two years ago, Graham, because you know I crossed sixty. <laughs> so right. anyway, but it was a while ago. Um, there was a, a young lady in Texas, um, and I, I saw her. I, I believe she benched. Uh, 200, 210, or something like that in a video, and the kids in there, the boys, when she got that weight up, they they celebrated like it was a Super Bowl win or a, you know, they won the lottery. I mean, they just went nuts. They p- picked her up off that bench and were, you know, shaking her and and everything. It's it's like man, you know that it, that was incredible to mm-hmm. me. That's um, a feel good thing when you got your peers, your friends, yeah. and everything encouraging yeah, you. Yeah, it, it is. If when you may want to stop and it's a, yep. you look one of your buddies in the eye and say, "No, you can you, do you it." You do one more. You yep. get one more. Um, so that is encompasses what we've got going on for sports. Also, I mentioned six A baseball, softball. Uh, Bryant, uh, Bryant and Cabot, Leland, Bryant and Conway for base for baseball. I can't yes. Six A. Yeah. Yes. Um, Rogers Mounties were the number one seed. Uh, Harbor, number two seed in baseball on the softball side. Uh, uh, Bentonville, number one seed. Rogers, number two seed. Had a great softball ra- race down to the last day, Ricky. Down yeah. to the last day in 6A. Uh, Rogers, uh, by virtue of, of, of a larger run margin against Harbor, got the number two seed. Both finished 13-3 uh, and three in the conference. Um, Rogers, somewhat expected with Ella Beeman back, Ava Johnson back, uh, Lauren Heinley. They're, they're a really loaded team. Harbor, I love it that Harbor was back, back battling in the elite again this year, and, and uh, the conference needs more good teams in it, you know, to push, you know, to push the others, and uh, love to see Harbor, uh, you know, back in that yep. mix. And, and uh, Candy Bailey, so they were down for a little bit. They've been down for a little bit, but but uh, they had a really good season. Also helps Anderson Reed, their big pitcher, sophomore. Um, that you you got a pitcher, you got a chance to win every game of softball, and uh, they got one. Yep. Yeah, um, so, we'd like to mention too on the baseball front. You know, everybody heard about the tragedy with Bentonville High's uh, team. Terrible. And, you know, uh, heard from Todd Abbott. He was actually congratulating me on the sports editor thing and and Kent early for that matter. But, um, you know, those the, you know just just a tough thing to go through. And yeah. I know those boys will play inspired this week as well. Yeah. In case you hadn't heard it, a young man lost his life in a uh, kind of a freak accident at uh, Beaver Lake. Um, took a bad fall, uh, fell down uh, cliff. a cliff. Yeah, I don't know how far the yeah, fall Yeah, I've been trying was, to envision yeah. this in my head because it was, it was the, the details of it are just crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, prayers out to his family, that family, and the uh, Bentonville Tiger baseball family, and the perfect timing baseball family of which he was also a member of, and J.T. Baker and that group, and they do such a, such a great job uh, over there. Now, uh, we want to talk about some uh, sports-ish t- uh, topics, but this is not on the field. This is off the field. Um, Springdale um, has filled its athletic director's job. Uh, Wayne Stellick had announced a few weeks ago um, that he was stepping down as the athletic director, so they have had a search for an AD. They have filled that search, and uh, I tell you what, Ricky, I could not be more ecstatic for what Springdale, who Springdale's hired, Keith Fimple. Our Any, boy Fimple. Anytime your last name is Fimple, that I hold that in high regard. <laughs> Leland, would you wouldn't you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And so yeah, we're getting one of them closer getting to home. One. Now we need to work on the other one. Now the one we're getting closer home will tell you he's the better looking of the two. That's he, a low bar, he, but the bar is pretty will, low he there. Will, he will tell you that. Yeah, he will tell you that. Uh, Daryl uh, will is the other Fimple brother. He's of course the girls' basketball coach at North Little Rock. And we're so proud of him. He's one of our guys from Alma. 
Keith Fimple has been the football coach at Conway, but before that he was assistant at, at Leland at Southside for a long time. He was at Southside for a long time. Uh, he was at uh, Harbor, yep. yep. And uh, El Dorado uh, also was a grad assistant at Henderson State uh, after he had graduated from there. I Everybody's said, from Henderson State. I've just figured this out over the years. Yeah, <laughs> I said, Fimp, did you? I said, I said, you spent four years at Henderson State, and he goes, Well, I wasn't on the four year plan. I was on the five year plan. But, I was on a seven. <laughs> yeah. But but anyway, um, props to Springdale. Uh, I my I, I, I am uh, an unabashed Springdale fan. Uh, Rick, I, I, yep. I just am, you know, just am. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm happy for the Springdale kids because I know, I know that uh, Keith Fimple uh, will go to the mat for Springdale kids. And, you know what? Uh, uh, I'm a fan of Springdale High, too. And, you know, Harbor, over there, they got on a better side of town, and they've done real good. And Springdale has really struggled. Uh, you know, it's more uh, diversity over there. And, man, I, I wish they'd get their, their sports back up. And if anybody can do it, uh, our man Fimp can do it. Yeah, yeah. So good for Springdale. Now, that leaves us. Uh, Leland, you had some news this week down at Greenwood. Well, uh, athletic director Dustin Smith has left the athletic director position at Greenwood to take over the AD position at Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, Good the largest uh, school in Oklahoma. Wow. So that's a yeah. great step for him, yeah. and uh, we wish him well. And you know that uh, that position is now open. So that'll be that will draw some some big time interest yeah. there um, at Greenwood. And uh, uh, Graham brought a, brought up an interesting point. Um, would uh, would uh, Chris Young be uh, be uh, a candidate there? I think that's a very distinct possibility. Um, you know, it's it's so hard. Uh, I know at the at the seven A level, uh, we talk football seven A level, the largest sixteen schools in the state. It's hard to do both of those. Yeah, I think six A, it's borderline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you yeah. know, it, it can be done, and some of them do, but that's a. It's, it really depends on how much he wants to be the football coach because, you know, so much of that time is devoted for that. In yeah. fact, mm -hmm. during half of the school year, that's where his time's going to be devoted. So that's that's a tough position to take on as also the head football coach on the 6A level. The yeah. last guy I remember doing both in a large – I'm going to put Greenwood in a large school category. Yeah. They, they've got a lot going on there, but Ronnie Peacock is yeah. the last guy I remember to do both. I could be wrong about about that, but he I don't know was he the I thought was HB Stewart was still the AD for at least part of that time before he retired though. Well, well I, I was think thinking too, Ronnie Peacock and Jerry, Rogers. Oh, at Roger, yeah. And, and Jerry Cecil yeah. uh was the AD a long time before that. Um I don't guess was Barry Lunny never the uh, AD no, at Bentonville. No. No. Okay. No, okay. No. Um, one that may thing, be that may be Ronnie Peacock at yeah. Rogers may have been the last one. One thing also to keep in mind, uh, Chris Young was the AD for a very very ten short days, time. Ten yeah. days, yeah, at, at Cabot, ten days. correct? At, was it Cabot? Or, yeah, at Cabot. Yes, at Cabot. It was ten days until uh, him and his wife were driving back to Greenwood one day and decided um, they had a long conversation. Or it might have been a short conversation, mm -hmm. and uh, it ended after ten days. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now, do they have an assistant AD down there for uh, this person could uh, do some of that? Chores? Uh, could could be, could be. You know, there's also the you know maybe the opportunity Clay Reeves maybe wants to, you know, move into that role. He would also be, I would think, to be a good candidate for it to yep. having lo longevity. You know, in the school. Business. Well, I but, I but talked to him it? this morning and I don't think he's interested. No? No. What, about, what about Rick Jones? <laughs> would he might come back for something? Uh, like that? Uh, I don't know. You I know what? I, I thought of that when I saw this, and, uh, you know, who who knows? I, I don't know how much he's enjoying the college gig. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard that as well. Uh, also want to mention, also uh, on the coaching front, um, he had kind of been out of our area for a year, but Greg Scott, who played at Northside uh, for Johnny Mason um, and has been basketball in the coaching. Player. Yeah, basketball yeah. player. Has been in the coaching ranks for a while. He has left Sal Salisaw as the girls' coach and is going – to Tulsa Central as the new boys basketball coach. Over oh, there. wow. So okay. If you've never had an opportunity to sit down and visit with Greg Scott, and I don't know, Graham, did you, when he was at Lincoln, did you ever visit with him any? No. He was at Lincoln for a little while. Um, anyway, it's a good move for him uh, to go to Tulsa Central 
and uh, he's a great guy, and, and good. that's a good hire for them. Uh, also want to mention we still do have vacancies. Uh, Green Land, of course, we mentioned Lee Larkin has, is retiring. Um, so that's the head football coach and, and athletic director job there. <laughs> Berryville, uh, Brian, our, our guy Brian, Brian is leaving. Uh, Hudson. Hudson's yeah. leaving there. Uh, so you have the head football coach there. Uh, it's not the AD, but it's just a head football coaching job there. And am I leaving anything out, Leland, that you're? The Alma girls right. will have a press conference Friday afternoon at 2 o'clock for a meet and greet with their new coach. Clay like Reeves. His... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's right, because Cody Mann took the head coach's job at Gentry. That's so. right. That's right. Um, and so uh, m- kind of some movement going wrong. I-, I also think, and I saw this on Facebook, but I don't know, don't have any the, all the specifics on it, but apparently Elkins has hired a new I believe girls basketball coach. It might be boys, but I think it might be girls um, from uh, Coach Adams from Hackett uh, coming up to take that position. Um, so uh, coaches moving around and and uh, it's probably the girls over there. It may be. Yeah. It may be. I need to go back and look at it again. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, always, I don't have that. But. There's always a flurry of moves this time of year yep. and more yep. to come. Yep. I was talking to Jeff Williams this morning about just you know this this time of year is just so hectic of you know a lot of. A lot of incoming and outgoing, yeah. and you just got to kind of pay attention to see what's going on. Better uh, You better have your resume file uh, uh, current because uh, you're going to have to start pulling them, you know, as coaches make these moves around and everything. So, um, anyway, that's that's what we got, got going on in sports. And, uh, Henry, it, Apple is not here today uh, on the podcast like he normally is. He is down in Russellville covering the meet of champions, track and field meet down there. Um, Henry had a really, really good story today on a, on a runner from Clarksville. Um, I um, I'd have to go back and look at his name again. Uh, but anyway, Matthew the, Dunsworth. Matthew Dunsworth um, is raising, trying to raise twenty five thousand uh, dollars to create an endowment um, for uh, track athletes in Clarksville um, to to get them a better quality of running shoe. The young man said he had you know had teammates out there running in Converse uh, Chucky e. T's, Chuck T Converse shoes, and Crocs. Which, by the way, if you even own a pair of Crocs, I mean, why would you even own those things? But uh-huh. anyway, um, so his endowment, he's trying to raise 25000 set up an endowment. The interest uh, accrued off of this endowment would fund <clears throat> these, the purchase of, of shoes for many years to come. And uh, so this is a young man, Ricky, who is the very definition of paying it forward. Mm-hmm. Um, he said to his parents, he's been fortunate. His parents have been able to afford to give him a higher quality of running shoe, Hoka, you know, Brooks, whatever it is that he runs in. Uh, but a lot of his teammates don't have that same um, resource. And so, that. yeah, and so he is trying to help uh, help out. So long after he is done running, his legacy will continue to live on at Clarksville. What a yeah. what a great giving uh, young man that is. Well, and I'm hoping, you and know, he's- I- Go ahead, Leland. I'm and sorry. And he's one of the top long distance runners in the state. Yeah. He's a 1,600, 3,200 meter guy. And he is, uh, I'm interested to see the matchup today between him and Noah Embry of Greenwood at the Meet of Champs. Yeah. Now, that brings us to this segment called the Feats of the Week. Okay. So, F E A T. F E A T. But sometimes it involves F E E T. Soccer. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to start over with Ricky. He is going to give you his feet of the week. Graham, if you want, if you have something, you can throw it in. If not, we'll skip it over to Leland for his feet of the week, and then I will have a feet of the week. So, Ricky, the clock is on. You know what? We know Gunnar Wooler from basketball. He's ex-all-conference, honorable mention, all-state. But the kid can also do it on the baseball field. The other day he struck out nine, allowed only two hits in five innings, uh, when they won, when uh, 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 Gravit, yeah, when Gravit won the uh, championship over Dardnell. And he also helps out at plate two for four. He started a rally, and I guess in the seventh inning with a single, and the Lions uh, rallied. They won the game, uh, beat the Sand Litter six to five. So not only does he do it on the basketball court, he does it on a diamond as well, on a mound at the plate. So my feet of the week is Gunner. Willard of Gravit. Congratulations to Gunner. He is Ricky Fire's feet of the week. Graham, you, you got something you want to you skip over here? Yeah, we'll go ahead and skip over to Lee. I don't have a feet of the week, but uh, man, I'm looking forward to, to getting a part of that. That yeah, sounds like yeah, fun. Absolutely. All right, Leland, your feet of the week. 
Well, it's, you know, it was a tough decision because, you know, we've mentioned Allison Edwards so much. Yep. And, of course, Kaylee Ward and the Mansfield Ooh. Lady Tigers have been yep. so good all year. And then I've already covered Reese Marishka. That's probably who I was leaning toward, but I've already covered all of that. So I'm going to have to go back to Monday, and, and I'm going to go to the F-E-E-T. Okay. Monday at Northside, uh, Felix Hurry, head football coach there for two years now, has had a football combine where he brings in about eight to ten college coaches and he invites the area schools to come in and, and go through, uh, you know, uh, they run the 40, they do some quarterback stuff, and there were probably about 25 to 30 of the area's uh, top athletes, football players there doing various things in front of these college coaches on Monday. Ham Massey ran a 4.31. Woo! And a and a four point three five in his two times in the forty. Now that was handheld. Smoking. About an hour later, he got an offer from Arkansas State, which which was his first official offer. So yeah, yeah. you go out and run a four three one and a four three five, and all of a sudden, the college coaches have noticed. Yeah, what, and he's a sophomore. That's awesome that the, the coach Curry does that over at Northside for his kids. He you know he puts them out there and invites yeah. college coaches to come in, and that is. That is phenomenal, you know, that he does that for his kids. So that yeah, is the your... foot, the the quarterbacks that were there Monday was Northside's McLean Moody, Southside's Carter Zimmerman, Alma's Jackson Daly, and Van Buren's Bryce Perkins. Okay, um, I, I I don't want to set the expectations too high, but you know those guys may throw for a combined ten thousand yards this year. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a great thing. And what they he not only does it for his kids for area kids. It's, yeah, it's too. a com- open combat. I mean that is yeah. that yeah. is. Yep spectacular yeah that's Good awesome for him that is awesome uh that brings us to me and my feet of the, of the week i could i have a couple of them i could throw out there okay ricky i could well, give me your 1a well i could go madison galindo easy 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 easy, easy. bentonville distance runner yep ricky if i remember right she was part of a record setting four by 800 yep relay there's the only she, star she won the 1600 yep won the 3,200. Yep. And I think she drove the bus down to Fort Smith. And won the shop pub. And won, no, maybe no, not. Maybe not. Okay. I think she drove the bus down to Fort Smith, yeah. went over to Arby's, picked up all of their lunches, and yeah. brought those back. And then she might have done a TV commercial when the track ended. Then she tuck everybody in bed that night. That night. So that is a well-rounded day. No, That's seriously, it. Madison Galindo, wow, what yes. a tremendous, tremendous uh, showing at the 6A State Track Meet. So I could go that route. Yeah, I could go. What else you got? I'm going to go a little bit different here, and I'm going to give you this feed of the week. And when you hear it, you might go, is that really a feat? But I'm going to tell you, it is and why it is. Is that really a feat? Everybody knows, or most anybody who follows softball in the area knows who Callie Kildow is, right? Everybody knows who she is. Yes. She was a star at Gravit, uh, had a gruesome broken leg in basketball as a a sophomore, I think, and and, uh, affected her a little bit. But she signed with Arkansas. And softball. has been softball, and has been a contributor for the for the women's uh, softball team there at Arkansas. Yep. Uh, which, by the way, they're hosting the SEC softball tournament at Bogle Park yes. as we speak yes. for the rest of this week. But everybody knows who she is. Yes, her little sister Sydney is a sophomore at Gravit, and f- following along, anytime you have a big older sister who's as accomplished as Callie was, there always is kind of a a little bit of pressure, you know, on the yeah, young no player. Are you yeah. going to be as good as your big sister? Whatever. I ain't as good as the daddy yeah. was. I've heard it a million times. Yeah, uh, except when they're talking about yours, Rick. I'm, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, anyway, um, Sydney Caldo, uh, this this year for softball, she has been the number two pitcher for Gravit behind the young lady who we had mentioned earlier, Brooke Handel. Okay? So, Brooke had gotten hurt, um, you know, with, with that story, and for those two games – uh, Sydney stepped up in the circle and got two wins for Gravit. Now, maybe they weren't, you know, against P. P Ridge, but they were two big wins that she got for her team. That's while, a feat. But that's a feat. Yeah. Now, but, but this is why I think she is the feat of the week for, for me. Against P. Ridge in the regional championship game that was going to determine their seeding, a pretty big game. Yeah. This ain't just a regular season four. This is a big, is a big game, okay? Yeah, absolutely. I get there in the press box, and I get ready to, to start charting the game, and I look out there, and I'm like, wait a minute. That's not Brooke Handel out there in the circle. That's that's Sydney Kildown. Why is she pitching? <laughs> well, not only did she pitch, she pitched three scoreless, hitless innings to start that game for Gravit to give her girl, Brooke, a little bit of a break. 
Wow. Well, they're jaw wired shit in the yep. in the dugout. Yep. She yeah. said, "Don't like, I got this. I got this." She stepped out there, three scoreless, hitless innings, kept the team, kept her team right there in the game for three innings, and then in the fourth, Brooke came back out and she pitches the next four, and they get the three nothing win. But without Sydney's contribution to start that game, absolutely in a ninety, de- it's ninety degrees that day. Yep. Saturday's ninety degrees on turf. On turf. Yeah. That's huge. That was huge for Gravit, and I didn't get to write a whole lot about that in the story because, it, you know, there's only so much you can write about. Yeah. But I thought that was pretty big for Gravit. Little sis coming up. Little sis big. coming up. So, for me, yeah. my feet of the week is Sydney Kildow and what she's done for Gravit softball pitching for them, and, and that was huge for her Saturday. Absolutely, so I that's, agree. Yep. It's a, kind of a long story. I did some winding turns, came back around the outside. It ended Went well. to the whip, Ricky, at the end and yep. brought it home. Brought, and it, brought home. it home. There you yep. go. Like, like Mage or Magic. What is it? Mage, Madge, Mage. What's her name? Uh, Mage. Mage. Yep. Paid so, uh, $32 the dollars on a $2 ticket. There you go. There you go. I know about that gambling stuff. All right. So, Leland, you got anything else for us? No, that's uh, that's about it. Man. The Alma um, coaching job should be announced Friday. Um that's, that's about it. Okay. Graham? Oh, just happy to be here, man. Looking forward to working with you guys. Again, congratulations on you, on, on your new position as I move off into the the pasture. I'm in another pasture over there. They're moving me to another pasture, Ricky. So, I know, uh, and we'll be looking out for you. We'll throw you some oats over there you, every now you, and then. Thank you. Just make sure my hay is a little bit fresh. Yeah. Maybe i got some yeah. fresh water. Um, Ricky, you got anything else? <laughs> that's it. I got nothing. So we'll be Why back, start now? We'll be back here next week for the final prep rally of this school year, and we'll recap uh, the state uh, tournaments yep. that we're covering and going to, and we'll give you a little preview of the state finals, which will be the following week. Um, in Conway, all over Conway, uh, for the weekend of champions. So we'll talk about that and set the stage for that. So for Ricky Fires, for Graham Thomas, for Leland Barclay, for Henry and Paul Boyd, who are not here today. They're I'm working just, while they're, we're they're mouthing. Working while we're just, yeah, filling space. Yakking. Yeah. Uh, thanks for being with us, and we will catch you next time on Prep Rally the Podcast. The Prep Rally Podcast is produced and directed by the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Find us on SoundCloud, Apple, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher.